Hello and welcome back to PC Retro Tech. This week we're taking our fourth and final look at the Tandy 1000 SX for Sept Tandy. And this week we're going to be looking at sound generation and how to get musical instruments on the sound chip. Uh, but before I get to that, I've done a little bit more retro writing this week. I actually did the faceplate of the floppy again. Uh, it's a little bit wider, I think. And I also did the front of the monitor, which looks really great now. Uh, but the really impressive thing is the mouse. Uh, at least the top of the mouse is much wider than it was. Under studio lighting, it looks really white. Uh, that's not really exactly what it looks like to the naked eye. Uh, but let me stick it on a really unrealistic white balance setting just so that you can see a little bit more of the yellow. Uh, and maybe if you've seen the previous videos of this, uh, you'll see just how much of a difference has actually been made. As you can see, uh, it looks uniformly yellow now, uh, which is better than it was before. There was a big horrible yellow stain right across the middle here. To the naked eye, I can see a little bit of a patch of yellow in the middle still. Uh, it doesn't really show up on camera, which really shows just how different this looks now. Unfortunately, the side still has a horrible yellow stain uh, up the end here. And I think uh, this is just not going to come out with the chemicals I'm using, or maybe it just didn't get enough sun. I'm not really sure yet. I might give it another go at some point and see if I can get that out. Uh, but yeah, what a difference from the way it looked originally with that ugly yellow stain that we had right across. One of the problems I had in programming the sound chip for the Tandy 1000 SX is there doesn't seem to be a section on it in the technical reference manual. Uh, they have a section on their video controller chip and although it has some errors and omissions, uh, it is there and is relatively detailed. And they cover quite a few other sections of the machine. Uh, there's even a big long section on the math coprocessor, which I don't even have in my machine. Uh, it looks like it's just photocopied out of an Intel technical data sheet, uh, page numbers and all. Uh, if you're wondering, this timing control generator is a different chip entirely. Uh, that's for timing control of system components. Uh, so the original chip that was used was the Texas Instruments SN76489 chip. And it was used in quite a lot of different machines, obviously the IBM PC Junior, uh, but there was a ColecoVision machine, some of the Acorn machines like the BBC Micro, and a whole bunch of Sega machines used it. Uh, there was also a clone of the chip that was used in the TI-99 4A machine. But uh, the chip that's often used in the Tandy 1000 SX is the NCR8496, which is another clone of the chip. Uh, or sometimes they use the original uh, TI-SN76489. Uh, so it's just random which one you get, and they are broadly compatible, of course. Uh, so I had a look in mine. It was actually really hard to see uh, since it's under the hard drive and floppy bay, uh, but I managed to get a piece of mirror and a bright light, and I can just read, I think, NCR8496. Uh, so I have the clone chip, not the original. The only real text I can find that covers the sound chip is this three paragraphs here. Uh, it's not even in its own section. Uh, so they give the chip number, of course, and an executive summary of its capabilities. Uh, but the only real programming information here is just a hint that on port 61 you can enable it uh, without any real details. Uh, so it's really bizarre that there's no long description somewhere of how to program this chip given that it's one of the defining features of this machine. Well, after searching through this manual multiple times page by page, I did eventually find that there's a list of ports and uh, the various bits in the registers and what they do. So in port 6.1 here, we see sound control 1, sound control 0, sound control 2. Uh, this one apparently for disabling the internal speaker and there's speaker data out enable whatever those are about uh, so there is information here it's just not presented in a way that's particularly useful i presume that the way that you meant to use this manual is to trace through all the block diagrams by hand and figure out what is connected to which and then make a good guess about uh, what the individual bits in the registers might turn on and off anyway uh, so the sound chip is actually connected to ports C0 and C7 according to the manual here. And you can see that there are three tone generators and a noise generator. So for each of the tone generators you have a frequency and an attenuation. 
Uh, by attenuation, I assume they mean the inverse of volume, so the higher the attenuation, the lower the volume. And given that they list F0 through F9 for frequency, I presume that it's a 10-bit number to specify the frequency, but it doesn't really specify uh, beyond that uh, exactly what it means. Uh, so then for the noise generator, uh, there are three bits here uh, with cryptic names, and I have no idea what those mean. Uh, so uh, that is perhaps just different kinds of noise. Uh, I'm really not sure. And then there are four bits for the noise attenuation. Now, the really cool thing about the Tani 1000 is that you can actually mix the output for the PC speaker along with uh, the sound chip before it reaches the speaker. Uh, this is different to the PC Junior, where it's either or, but they set this up slightly incompatibly here uh, so that you have the option of mixing the two. So you really can end up with five different sound sources. There are three tone generators, a noise control, and also uh, the PC speaker output, which is just generated uh, the same way it is on the IBM PC. Uh, so that's pretty sophisticated. On the other hand, uh, there doesn't seem to be any way to change the waveform that's used for the tone generators here. Uh, you only have a square wave, presumably, and so that's going to really limit the timbre of the instruments that you can get out of this sound chip. Well, now is probably a really good time to point out that I'm not an expert in sound generation on the computer. So I do know that uh, all different sounds that we hear have different waveforms, and there are even waveforms that change over time. And unfortunately on the Tandy 1000, we're not able to control the waveform in any way. But what we can control is the envelope of the sound, and this is something you can't do on the IBM PC speaker. So uh, the envelope is uh, the shape of the sound over time in terms of its volume. So whenever you play a note on a musical instrument, uh, whether it be pressing a key on a keyboard or blowing a note uh, on a woodwind or brass instrument or plucking a string, there's an initial hit that occurs uh, where the sound rises to a maximum volume and then drops off suddenly. Uh, this is called the attack and decay phase. And then the sound might hang around at some volume for a while and eventually start dropping back off to zero. Uh, this is called the sustain and release phase. Uh, so what we're going to do today is use that attenuation level to try and create uh, different kinds of envelopes for sounds so we can get uh, a kind of simulation of different kinds of musical instruments. Now because we can't change the waveform, we're not going to be able to get the difference between a flute and uh, a violin and a pipe organ, for example, but we might be able to get uh, different kinds of synthesizer sounds. Well, I started off writing a fairly straightforward program just to test the theory of the sound chip. So it's only going to use one voice at the moment, and when I press the space bar, it's going to play a single note at 440 hertz, but with an envelope. And if you want to visualize what envelope I used, it looks pretty much exactly like the one that I drew in the graph earlier in the video. Uh, so let's try it out and see what happens. The whole thing should play for about a second per note uh, if everything's working correctly. Uh, so let's give it a go and see. Well, I can't say that that's a second. I might have some of my timings incorrect with my programmable interval timer, but that's nothing to do with the sound chip. Uh, it seems that we've got the envelope working great. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is actually move on to the next step, which is to display a graphic on the screen of the current envelope and allow us to modify it in real time so we can see what kind of effects we can get. Well, through the magic of television, that's all done now. That took uh, quite a few hours, in fact. Uh, but now we have our little envelope generator. And if I just play the envelope that's there at the moment, uh, it'll sound like this. But uh, I've set it up so that you can actually change all of the features of it. So if I press A, it will allow me to move about the attack part of the envelope. And uh, if I play it now, you get a very different kind of tone. And if I press uh, D, for example, I can change the decay part of it uh, and move that about. And again, we'll get a completely different sound uh, this time. 
and obviously I can do the same for the sustain. Uh, I can change the sustain level or uh, extend that point out and maybe just make it drop suddenly off at the end. Let's try that. And uh, I can also change the length of the thing by uh, pressing the R key for release and then moving the end point of the release. Uh, so for example, if I uh, move the sustain right in, I could also make this a much shorter note and I might actually have to move the uh, decay right in as well. So the way I've set this up is that there are 240 pixels across and this corresponds to two seconds of time. And uh, so basically uh, you can change everything down to one one hundredth and twentieth of a second. There are only 16 attenuation levels, uh, so there are only 16 different levels in the vertical direction. Uh, but now let's uh, change the release time so that this is a very short note and you'll see the difference uh, when you have a short note uh, versus a long one. So it still sounds like the same instrument because we can't change the timbre of the sound, uh, that's the waveform, uh, but we can change the envelope, the shape of the sound. So this is how we can generate instruments uh, with the Tandy 1000 in a very, very primitive way. Of course, uh, more sophisticated uh, computerized keyboards and so on actually have much more complicated waveform and uh, envelope generators and there are all sorts of other effects as well. So this is very, very primitive, uh, but it does give us a kind of synthesizer feel. So basically we'd have to do this for each of the voices on the machine and then we could add noise as well. So what I'm going to do now is load up a program that someone else has written. Now there's two ways you can do this. You can either record samples and just basically adjust the volume level uh, in a waveform that follows a sample. Uh, you have to use a lot of CPU power for that because you basically are responsible for every single up and down of the waveform. Uh, or you can do what I'm doing here and uh, just play back voices where there's just an envelope for the voices. So uh, I've been given some recommendations of some programs to try for that. Uh, so let me load some of those up and I'll show you how they work. Well, this is TNDY Tracker by Jan Knippitz, and uh, this is available on the Vogons forum. If you search around, you should find it fairly easily. And basically, uh, what this does is allow you to control each of the three voices plus noise. And as far as I can tell, in the rightmost column of each voice is the current attenuation for that voice. And then, of course, in the leftmost column, you have the note that's playing and of course the octave as well. So let's just play uh, this particular piece and see how it sounds. So I think that sounds pleasant enough, a uh, fairly slow moving piece, but uh, yeah, you can see the effect that you get uh, when you just use each of the three voices. And for the most part, from what I can see there, there's just attenuation toward the end of a note, uh, if the note's long enough. And uh, this just gives it a little bit more of a musical feel to it. There's not really an envelope generation per se here, as far as I can see. Another feature that this has is to load and import Amiga mod files, uh, which is just a way of storing music on the Amiga. So I've loaded up one called Moonlight, which is presumably Moonlight Sonata. So let's just play that and see how it sounds.
actually. It's obviously not Moonlight Sonata, but uh, anyway, a nice enough tune. Uh, so that's the mod player conversion, so it just converts it to the same Tandy Sound format. It can also load Sierra AGI format. Uh, so let's take a look at one of those playing. So yeah, a very straightforward uh, way to play music on the Tandy 1000, but it works just fine. Uh, so let's take a look at another option. Well, I was going to show you how to play back VGM format, but unfortunately the player no longer seems to support Tandy 1000. So according to the documentation that comes with it, uh, it does support a whole host of systems but when you actually run the command line help, uh, all of those have been scrubbed out and the only one that's left is pretty much Sound Blaster. Uh, so that's a bit of a shame. So VGM format is video game music and uh, there are files for a whole load of games that we know and love, including Wibarm, which I've shown on the channel before. And so this would have made a good example of Tandy three voice sound and a way that you can actually play music on that. Uh, so it's a little bit unfortunate that this is no longer working. There may be other VGM format players out there that do still work with the Tandy 1000, but unfortunately I have completely run out of time this week. Uh, it took me so long to write that envelope generator uh, that I just have no time left. Uh, there's well over a thousand lines of assembly language there. But there's always next year, uh, there's Septandy uh, in 2022, so perhaps an interesting project would be to write uh, a little tracker program that actually uses uh, the envelope generator that I created. So if you'd like to see something like that, uh, let me know in the comments and I'll consider that for Septandy next year. Anyway, that's all I have time for this month and for Septandy, we'll be back with our regular scheduled content uh, next week as usual. And uh, if you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you in a later video. Bye.